Hey everyone, welcome back. In this Postman tutorial, we are going to learn more about the API test automation and one of the very important methods in JavaScript as well, uh, which will be really helpful when we are doing the API test automation. Okay, so first thing is basically we did a lot of automation setting up the variables through the script and then using it in our next script. Basically in the create issues, if you'll see, we have identified our got the project IDs, account ID and issue ID from uh, the previous call and then automatically those are those variables are being stored. The values in the variables are being stored and then these variables are being referred here in the create issue call, right? So now another important thing now say for example here in this test what I have done is I have set the or uh, when I'm setting the collection variable for the project ID I am basically saying okay the project that I'm looking for will be available at the third value or basically the fourth will be the fourth element of the array when the response comes in right now in my Jira instance suppose I have created few more projects right so it might not be necessary that the response that I'm getting the ID that I'm looking for at number three say for example I'm looking for the ID for a project ABC which currently is at number three but then tomorrow there will be more projects when created this id or when the response will be there this the this project id might be at a different location right or at a different number then this will start pulling up a different project id altogether and i do not want to create a issue in the project which this particular id will start picking up okay so in order to ensure that you are actually picking up the ID of a project that you want, you are creating the issue of a type that you really want. The next thing is all issue types, right? So here I'm saying, okay, I want the issue type uh, or the issue ID for the issue which is at a response number two. Okay, so tomorrow the issue that is there at response number two. So for example, let me send this. Okay, so it's more clear. And in the response, if you see, so at the moment, the first value here is the ID is 1003, which is basically a task. Okay, then I'm looking for the next value, which is 100. One two, which is story okay so now say for example I'm looking for story at the moment which is at number two but then tomorrow it changes the location right so there are more issue types that are being added and story is now fetched at a number five or story is at number five within the array okay so what will happen in that particular case or the numbers have been deleted so it's always a better idea to basically check for the name, right? And then based on check of the name, you fetch the ID. Okay. And that's where this map function that we are going to discuss now will understand what map function is and then how we are going to use in the response. So you can build better automation scripts. Okay. That's the whole purpose of this background. So now let's quickly go back and let let us just go to the get projects okay now we'll simply understand what this map function is all about okay so say for example i'll just create a dummy array okay so i'll say array and let's have some values there okay so i'll say one two three four five okay so five values within this array okay now usually what the map function does is so if i say arr1 okay and then map okay so this map method if you see i'll simply hover over okay so you'll see that it accept this accepts a callback function okay this so map method accepts a callback function which will then basically so what happens is this map method will iterate over all the elements of the array okay so whatever callback function it accepts okay it accepts basically three argument but we'll understand about the uh, the callback function uh, you can also provide the index and the array uh, specification but initially let's start building from the basics so we'll just discuss about the callback function okay so it will accept the callback function and then perform the operation of that function on each element of the array okay on each element of which array of the array that is having these values so for example arr1 okay so whatever function say for example i define a separate function here okay so i'll say there is a function okay which is basically 
I, I'm just naming it a double value. Okay, so just naming this as double value. Okay, and just passing one of the number. Okay, so whichever number you are passing within this particular function, it should get doubled. Okay, so here what I'm doing is I'm simply saying, okay, whatever number I'm going to pass, double it and then print it on the console. Okay, so I'll say, you know, num into two. Okay, so whatever number I'm going to pass, it will be basically multiplied by two and then printed on the console. So if I just call this function, so I simply will do, okay, double value. And then if I want to double the value of 10, I'll provide the value 10. Okay, when I'm calling this function, now this is the definition, but this is the, this is actual calling of that. Okay, let me remove this and save it and then open the console and clear it and send this. So it should actually print 20. Right, so it, because it's in pre-requested script, you'll see that it has printed 21st, then request has gone and then post request, right? So this is what the function is doing, right? Now we know that the map method will accept what? It will accept a callback function. So I can directly have this callback function within what? Within my map method. So I can say array.map, okay? So on the map, okay, uh, on the array, I can have the callback function. What is the callback function? This is the callback function. So I can copy the whole thing, okay? And I can have this whole function, right? So I can have this whole function within this, right? Because this map method accepts a callback function, right? So I have put the whole function in there. So now what this map method will do? Map method will iterate over each of the element of this array. Okay, so each element of the array. So basically, the callback function will operate on the first element. Okay, then because we are using map, the callback function will then operate on the second. Okay, so basically map, what it does is it will iterate through each of the element of the array on which you are calling. Okay, and will perform the operation that is specified or defined within the callback function on those array and return a new array altogether. That's the, that's what the map method is all about. Map function is all about. Okay. So now let's say I simply want to run this. Okay. So let's see what will happen. What will be the output? So let me save it, go to the console, clear it and send. You will see first was the call that we initially had this. Okay. We, because we didn't commented it. So this double, double 10. Okay. And then you will see all the values here. Okay, so all the array values have been doubled, right? So two, four, six, eight, ten. Okay, so there are five values in the array. Okay, and those have been doubled and then printed on the console. Okay, so this is what it is doing. Now this array dot map it returns the array itself, right? So we can simply go ahead and also do this. Okay, so we can say console dot log. Okay, and then print that whole thing. Okay, so if I do that, okay, let's see, send this and oh, okay, so here it has written, but it is undefined. Okay, so why it is undefined? Let's me let me explain that. Okay, so we are we are logging here, but then within this, it should actually we are not we shouldn't be logging here, we should be returning, right? So here, we should just say return, okay, return the value, so that this gets returned. And the array is actually displayed on the array. Okay, so if I run this now again, you will see an array has been returned. Okay, and then the values have been printed, which are double of what the initial values were in the array. So if I clear it again, send it again, you will see that this is the array that has been returned. All right, so this is what the map method or function will help us to achieve in JavaScript. Now, how we are going to use it in our responses? Okay. So this is the basic of it. Okay, now the real example where you will be using it in the API test automation. Let's understand that as well. Okay, so I'll take another example. I'll take another array. So let me do one thing. I'll comment this whole thing and move this. So I have created a sample array, which is employee. Okay. And there are some employee basically here, right? So some objects there, basically name and department of the employee. Okay. And now we'll see how we are going to use map and how it, the map method is going to be useful for us in the testing. Okay. So now on this, okay, so on the employee array. So for example, if I simply say employee dot map, okay. And here, 
we can simply so basically let me go back here okay on the same method here okay so if we want to basically do a short form it of it right so we are using this function keyword right we can also ignore all of this right so we can use the arrow function because there is just one statement so we can use arrow function instead of the whole traditional function so i can remove all of that okay i can remove curly braces i can remove this curly braces from there okay and then simply add the arrow there okay and we also don't need the return statement okay so we simply are saying okay with this map method what we are saying is if you can read it like this okay so map each number okay so map each number of array okay and then return double of the number okay so basically we know that this map method runs through each number of the array and whatever you are doing whatever operation you are doing it will return the final of it right so this is what this is the simplest and shortest form and easiest form to remember okay so if i send this the response is not going to change okay so let me uh, quickly see what exactly is the error there so okay it's because of this i will comment this out okay and then run this again oh, arr1 okay i have not commented this line right so because that because of that this array is, was not defined right so and we are doing operations so that's why okay so now it should actually work so you'll see now it has returned the array with doubled the value okay so this is basically the easiest and simplest form let me put this array below here so you can understand right so we, we have defined an array and then i'm just printing whatever the output of this map method is over the array okay and what this map will do is it will whatever this callback function because it's taking this callback function so we can read it like this map each number of the array and return double of that number okay and then because this map will return another array so it will return two four six eight and ten okay and that's what you are seeing in the console right that's what you are seeing in the console okay another array being returned so that's what the map will do now the real case okay so this is the theory part now here how we are going to use it in our api testing so we'll simply say employee dot map okay and we'll use a arrow function because it's a more crisp and simple to use okay so we can simply define a function callback function and i'll say map value out of the employee so read it like this map a value out of employee okay map each value out of employee and then we can say where this arrow we can read it as where okay employee value can be a name or department right so we know that within employee we have the name or department right so we can simply say okay whatever value i'm going to choose out of this employee okay i'll say okay value dot either name whichever we want okay and then close the braces right and now in order to print the value out of the console okay so we'll simply say console dot log okay and surround it in the parenthesis right now we know this map when we read it like this so map each value from employee where value is name okay where value is name so what this will do is this map method will run over this array that is there okay and just fetch me the names out of it okay so if i just go to the console okay it's all clear send it again you will see it has fetched me the names out of it it has fetched me the array and just the names out of that array okay the employee now if i want the department i can simply change it to department right and send this and you will see in the response now i'm getting department okay ithr finance so this is basically where we'll be using this map very very frequently and in api testing you should actually know it because you will be using it a lot to do the api testing okay how because say for example here right how we are going to use it now we know that here we are getting the values within the array okay now within the value we are interested in just the id okay just the id so if i expand it here we are interested in either the name of the project or the key or the id right there are a lot of other information which are which we are not worried about okay we might be interested in the project type key okay or the style but whatever we need we will fetch that out of it okay not everything now you will see that there is so much information here 
it becomes really difficult to understand and see what all information is there. So fetching only the relevant information will be required and this is where the map method is going to be really helpful okay so that's what we wanted to understand as part of the map method the basic what is the relevance of it how you are going to use it in the api testing in the next video i'm going to cover how you are going to map use map to fetch some of the values okay and then we'll build more advanced automation skills in the api testing using postman so that's all for this video. I hope it was helpful. Thank you very much for watching.